Welcome to Celasta Circle. I'm Angie Sedeth Walsh, and my co host is Kate Robertson. Hey, everybody. Today, we have a very special guest and our very first guest on Celasta Circle. We have Carrie Cicely with us, who is the author of Parasites Inside Me. She has written this book as her personal journey dealing with parasites and conquering them. And she has a wealth of information for us today, not only the information, but also sharing what got her through her fight and how her faith saved her. And there's just, it's a, it's a massively inspiring story as well as full of information that I feel everyone needs. So let me introduce Carrie. Carrie. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. We're so excited to have you. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your, uh, how everything started, just like where you're coming from, what led you to write the book, make sure we show the book, <laughs> tell everybody where to <laughs> find it. <laughs> it is a phenomenal book. I'm going to tell you guys, it's the way she chronicles her journey is so easy to read and understand. And it's just so smooth. And, but I'm going to tell you, it is intense. I had to put it down several times because it was just mind boggling all that you went through. It was insane. What I went through, I, um, I definitely would not want to, uh, revisit that journey and do it, uh, do it again for sure. Um, but I wrote my book parasites inside me, um, which you can get, um, off of Amazon, um, but I wrote this book, um, not really intending to write the book, but it was more of a journaling for me, for my children, because I did not think that I was going to live. Um, and I wanted my children to understand um, what I had gone through, um, everything that I had tried and to give them the truth as I knew it to be um, after doing so much research. So my, my journal was actually about 630 pages long. Um, the book is a little more than 200 pages long. So there was a lot taken out um, simply because, you know, there was a lot of emotion in there. Um, and there were some other uh, truths in there that I was just not ready to reveal yet in the book. Um, but this, this book was to to let other people know that they're not alone. Because like me, when I first discovered that I had parasites, I thought I was the only person in the United States with parasites. Um, and it wasn't until my journey of researching, um, trying to find answers, that I found tens of thousands of people, majority women, um, that were suffering the same medical issues as well as the parasites themselves. Um, that's when I realized that um, we had a bigger issue going on than just me. Um, and so then it became um, important for me to share my journey um, to let's get this conversation started uh, because we have to start talking about it in the public forum for people to understand that we have an epidemic going on in this country. You're right. And I will say like when I was reading your book and I know Kate has this familiarity as well, we both have conquered Lyme disease and Kate has had uh, cancer a couple times as well. So we understand that there is a parasite, um, like you have to treat the parasites first with anything that you're conquering because they are the foundation. Is that, that's, I mean, that's what we found with Lyme. Is that what you found as well? Yeah, in all the research, um, and I, I did not read anybody's books. I read strictly the medical studies from around the world. Um, and that's exactly what I found to be the truth was that they were the underlying um, issue for many, many of my symptoms that I had encountered, um, you know, like appendicitis, uh, gallstones, thyroid nodules, 
brain lesions, um, fibroids. So they uh, were the root cause of all of those things. Uh, my fatty liver disease with cysts and lesions. I had multiple cysts in both breasts, um, cysts in my kidneys. So I had them throughout my abdominal area, my whole torso. I had them in my feet, my mouth. Um, so they were literally from head to toe within me, um, causing me many, many issues that uh, we have named as a disease. So every issue that they were causing me, there was a doctor calling it some sort of a disease. Right. So nine times out of 10, all of those things, if you guys are paying attention, all the things that she just talked about and was listing, um, even she had surgeries to remove, you had four or five organs removed. Um, so I had a hysterectomy, a uh, partial thyroid lobectomy, uh, a cholecystectomy or the gallbladder, um, that, uh, appendectomy. Yeah, I knew there was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so See, those were the surgeries of surgeries oh. back, back. And what I, I want to get across is like, when you're listening to this and you're listening to her talk, listen to what she's saying. Okay. And this hopefully will help put some puzzle pieces together for you. If you are going through something now, this will bring us to the next step of getting your doctor to listen to you, because when you are going through something, you, you're not crazy. You, you know, there's something wrong. I went 16 years misdiagnosed. You Fortunately, didn't have to go that long because you probably wouldn't be here if if you had went longer. Kate, she's had problems with it, you know, getting diagnosed as well. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that and like what what led you to being able to discover um, a parasitologist? Most people don't even know that those exist, and you and you learned that from the medical uh, journals that you were the all of the articles and stuff that you were researching. There's there's so much to this story. I want to touch on everything. So um, let's start there with like trying to get doctors to listen to you. Well, you know, when I first got sick, you know, I had a lot of things going on. You know, my, my uh, heart rate would be elevated or it would be very, very low. Um, one of the lowest that they documented was like 75 over 29 um, or it'd be really, really super high. Um, Normally, it was very, very low at night. Um, looking back in hindsight, I can relate that to the activity of parasites through the night because we know that that's when they're most active. Um, and then through the day, it would go really, really high. Uh, my body was trying so hard to adjust to the activity of the parasites. Um, I had a lot of... Um, fatigue. I was so exhausted, brain fog, dizziness. My ears were ringing. Um, but there were so many symptoms that I was having and I kept going to doctors and they would say, well, there's nothing wrong with you. Well, no, clearly there's something wrong because I'm very, very sick. Uh, there's something wrong. My vitals are all out of whack. My labs while they were telling me we're all normal, they were not. So my bun and my albumin were uh, all resulting, showing that I was, you know, having difficulty and I was in renal failure, um, but nobody would help me with that. Um, my five elements of my white blood cells were out of whack and the doctors would continue to say everything is within normal range. Um, even though on the reports, it would say high or low. So um, I continued to go to the emergency rooms and to the doctors trying to find out what was wrong with me, getting no answers at all. Um, and it wasn't until 11 months after uh, really the initial acute phases of many illnesses going on and four surgeries um, that I discovered that I, I had parasites. And the way that that came about was I actually passed 
two piles of parasites with no fecal matter. Um, when I went to the GI to discuss this with him, um, his demeanor was very interesting to me because uh, he made it crossed his arms, leaned back, and verbatim said, no, that doesn't happen here. Maybe a third world developing country, but that doesn't happen here. And I said, doc, did you hear me? Uh, I'm being eaten alive by parasites. My distended stomach now makes sense, you know. Um, and it was at that point on that day that they changed my medical records to say that both of my parents were diagnosed with mental illness disease, even though on the first visit with him two days prior, that was not in my medical records. Um, it wasn't for several months after that, that I discovered that he had done that. Um, but my point is these doctors across the board uniformly standardized their response when a patient comes in and says that you have parasites. And we have talked to thousands of people uh, across this country and in other countries. And that response is the same, no matter what state or country you're in. Right. Um, they say the same thing, cross their arms, lean back. And so that tells me that maybe there's something bigger going on here than what we are aware of. Um, and that's why this, this conversation is so important because um, if it happened to me, it's gotta be happening to somebody else. And then when we find out that that is the case, um, then we've, we've got something that we really need to look into and start asking more questions of those in power. Exactly. And see, this is like a journey that a lot of Lyme patients go through because they are not believed. You're told that you're crazy. They want to send you to a psychiatrist. They want to put you on, you know, medication instead of trying to figure out what is wrong with you. You know, like Kate, you can pop in here at any time, <laughs> you know, questions or things to say. But I know for me, like I went through the same thing, Carrie, like when you talk about in your book where you go to a doctor and they're just like, they're standoffish and they're like, uh, you know, they, with Lyme disease, they only learn about acute Lyme in medical school. They don't right. learn about what happens when it goes chronic. So there's, there's so much, all of this is like this talking to you right now is helping people connect the dots to things that are going on with them personally. It's gonna make them, they're gonna make them think, okay, she has yeah. similar, Angie and Kate have had similar things. What is going on? There's a lot of people that are there, they just, they give up. and we know that you can't give up. You gotta keep pushing through. Mm -hmm. And what helped you, Carrie? When um, you know, initially when I was sick, um, it was very difficult. It was difficult spiritually. It was difficult emotionally. It was difficult physically because, you know, you still have to function. You still have to pay your bills. You still have to go to work. You still have families to take care of. And so it was very difficult to keep pushing through just the daily tasks that one goes through in a, in a day. Um, and I did have a problem with uh, my relationship with uh, God, because um, I felt like he had abandoned me. He had, um, he had allowed this to happen to me, uh, even though I tried to be a, a, a good servant. Uh, and, I, you know, we're all full of flaws and we're all sinners. Uh, but at the same time, you still do try to do the right thing. And um, it wasn't until I submitted uh, everything to, uh, Yeshua that, um, everything started to change for me. Um, you know, my journey started and ended really quick. So just a couple of years when we see so many people that are suffering for 10, 20 and 30 years, um, and, and can't get no help. Um, it's, it's interesting because, you know, when, 
you look at a lot of the studies, they say that it always um, is very prevalent in the poor communities. Um, and what I will tell you is that I spent a lot of money in that two year period. Mm -hmm. I saw over 200 doctors in six different states. Um, there was nobody I was, would not reach out to. Um, I reached out to Dr. Redfield at the CDC many times and many others at the CDC. And um, this, this illness, this infection, no matter if you have two parasites or you have 20 parasites, this will make you poor because the mm -hmm. doctor visits that you're paying for, the travel that you're paying for, the medicines that they keep prescribing, trying to maybe help you, um, the inability to continue to function as a normal person, going to work every day, caring for your family, cleaning the house, your, your daily life chores. Um, so it will make you poor. And that's why you see a lot of people in poverty that are sick with many different ailments is because, you know, the, They've never gotten the answers and they have no idea what is wrong with them. But I can tell you that every study that I've read and I've studied just about every disease that I could think of related to parasitic infections and every one of them, according to these studies I've read, are directly tied to parasites. And where, where did you read those studies? Were they medical journals? Were they the CDC, the WHO? All of them. Okay. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of medical um, uh, sites out there um, that have all these studies. Um, so from different countries and then the CDC for us and the World Health Organization, there are thousands and thousands of studies out there. Um, and you just got to sit through and read all of these studies and what their findings were. Um, as well, you can reach out to parasitologists around the world as I have done. Um, and I have spoken to many um, who opened my eyes, who taught me a lot. Um, and then of course, Dr. Overstreet, who did the foreword on my book, um, he was the first to identify cystisarcosis for me. And um, that is a tapeworm and that likes to go to the brain. And we like to um, uh, call them brain lesions or uh, multiple sclerosis, according to the studies that I've read. Okay. So when you say that um, you contacted the parasitologist, did I say that right? Yes. <laughs> um, where did you find these parasitologists to be able to? reach out to them? Well, on every study, on most studies, let me say that, on most of the studies that are written and published, there is normally one doctor that is over that study. Um, and they normally have their email um, attached to that study. Okay. And I, as I would go through the studies, I would email every single one of them. Um, and there were so many that I simply copied and pasted the same thing over and over uh, because it takes time to sit there and rewrite your story. But um, out of all the probably thousands that I've emailed, um, there was only a handful that responded, um, Dr. Overstreet being one of them. And he was the most kind, helpful person um, that I've ever come across in this country. That's amazing. And this is like a, a key thing here too, is that nine times out of 10, most people are not diagnosed right away. We have to become the researchers. We have to become our own, maybe become a doctor without going to medical school, you know? So we are our own best advocate. And so the, the moral of the story right here is, is to never give up. When you know something is wrong, you keep pushing, you keep going through. When you turn everything over to Yesha, to the creator, things will just start falling into place for you. 
but you, it takes a little bit for people to do that because your faith is tested. And I have to say that that is one thing that I held on to. I never gave up faith, my faith. I never gave up hope because I knew I was like, I'm going to beat this. It's not going to beat me. And I, I would pray every day, several times a day. I would, you know, and like what you had talked about too, is, um, believing that you're going to be healed. So saying I am healed, you know, every day, I used to say that so many times a day and I still say it every day. So just reinforcing that and just believing, you know, and faith and trust. Well, yeah. And it's important to do that. It's important to tell your, to tell your mind positive things. You have to tell your mind the outcome that you want, because, you know, our mind is our computer and it controls our entire body down to our cells. And, you know, so there are people who have said, no, I can't, I can't do it. I can't get well. I'm not going to get well. And they're no longer here with us. Um, So you do have to feed your mind positivity because there is power in those thoughts. There's power in those words. And, you know, I'm sure you've, you, you ladies have heard somebody say you're speaking it into existence. Um, yes. and, and that's very true. You know, if you want something great in life, you have to talk it and speak it into existence because your mind, your computer will react and your body will follow in motion. Mm -hmm. Um, even your cells, you know, when you're stressing your cells die off, stress will kill your cells. And so, you know, there comes a point where you have to relinquish all of that power, put your faith back in, in your God and, uh, believe that you are going to get well. Absolutely. That, that is definitely a key point to getting through it. I mean, like you, I went through feeling like I was abandoned or feeling punished in some way. Like, what did I do to deserve all this, you know? And doctors telling me, well, you're too, you're too young. It can't possibly be cancer is what my pulmonary oncologist first said. And I'm like, I can't breathe. You need to figure this out. I don't care what you have to do, but I need to be able to breathe. I have two young children to take care of. And he was like, all right, we'll do a biopsy and bronchoscopy and see where it goes from there. And when he got in there, he apologized to me after the fact, you know, but that's, that is what they do. They fold their arms up and, oh, that's not possible. You know, they have a set thing that they say to everybody and you have to be the one that says, no, you are going to do this. I'm paying you. You're not in charge of me. So you have to be the one in charge of your own health and in charge of your own body. And like be aware, like look to people that are, this is what I did. I looked to people that were getting well, that were getting better. And I focused on them. I contact them. I did things like you did, Carrie. I researched everything I could get my hands on. I talked to people that I could, you know, I, I did just like like we all did. We've all been through it. We've all had to do the research. We've all had to become our own best advocates. And I would say that when you go into a doctor nine times out of 10, you know, more than they do about what's going on with you and what's happening with you. And they may be a good doctor, but they may not know everything. And that's where like, like what you had talked about, Carrie, too, is in Kate, is a great doctor is one that never stops learning, mm-hmm. always going to, you know, seminars and conversing with other doctors and looking outside of the box. Because when you stay inside the box, that's where you, you never get diagnosed with anything. Right. And you also don't find out the answers. And that's right. where the, the CMS contract comes in. Uh, the contract for Medicaid and Medicare services. Um, They don't allow our doctors to think outside the box. Uh, It controls our doctors down to the protocol of what should be done for any ailment or disease. And, um, you know, we do have doctors out here that are really great. And we do have doctors that like to think outside the box and try to educate themselves. Not a whole lot of them know anything about parasites, Um, 
I can't speak to Lyme disease, but I'm going to let you speak on that. But I can tell you that there's not a whole lot of parasite uh, doctors with the education of parasites. Um, The ones I've spoken to, um, including radiologists, have either gotten zero training in identifying parasites, learning the pathology of parasites, or they might have gotten a week or two um, in which they didn't always attend that time in in the school, um, the Rockefeller School. And um, (laughs) so it's up to us to to self-educate, you know, um, and, and spread the message, teach these doctors, help them to understand what is really going on. Because, you know, if they don't know, um, because of the heavy indoctrination through their education. Um, it is up to us. Um, and your podcast, uh, like today, is opening that door to start getting people to talk about this, to um, collaborate, to educate other people, because it's up to us, the people, to do this for each other, support each other, uh, because really we're all in this together. And, right. you know, parasites are so transmittable that, you know, I want the people that are going to be around me to understand uh, the pathology of parasites, um, just the basic information so that one, if they're sick, I can keep myself safe. Or if I'm sick, you know, I'm not going to have anybody around because I don't want anybody else to go through what I went through. Uh, but it's important to know that, you know, while we're out there mingling, you know, eating out at restaurants, using public restrooms, um, you know, take safety precautions because these things are very easily transmitted and you can get them from so many different places. So just being aware and it's not anything, it's not about being dirty or, uh, and it's nothing to be ashamed of if it does happen to you. The thing, the thing that we're trying to get across today is if you have your health right now, you have nothing going on, or maybe you have a few things going on to maintain your health costs a heck of a lot less (laughs) than when you lose your health. And all three of us have lost our health. We have lost everything. Yeah. And yeah, materialistic things that doesn't, you, you get really like, you can sell the stuff to help with, you know, paying for, for what you need. But when you're walking in and out of doctors, they're $500 of visits. And that's just for the visit. That doesn't count for the, uh, the natural medicines, the, uh, the Western medicines, which are the pharmaceuticals there, you're going to get all of that. And that costs money. It's thousands and thousands of dollars a month. I figured up to, for what I went through and to maintain my health is about 20 grand a year. And that's to do everything that I'm supposed to do to maintain my health so that I don't fall back so that I don't lose my health again. And once you lose it, you know, that my grandma always said, you lose your health, you lose everything. And I remember that growing up. And I I always remember that. And I did take care of myself. But we all three had things happen to us that was out of our control. So yeah. instead of asking, why is this happening to me? Start asking, what is this trying to teach me? Because I, we've all been chosen for this, for what we're doing, because we are the lights that are helping other people. What we've been through is an inspiration. It's just, hey, Carrie, your book, I'm just telling you, it's intense. I keep saying this over and over, but I had to put it down several times. And I was making notes for this interview and I was like, I'd go out there and I'd have to listen. I'd have to play a game of Russell or I'd have to like, you know, listen to some music or go talk to my mom or something because I was like, dang, this book is intense, man. Like it's, it's taken me back to like certain things that I went through with doctors and the treatments and just the different things. And it was like, this woman has been through it and she is here to tell you about it and to help you with her knowledge. Her knowledge is astounding. And the people that she works with and knows She has an upcoming book tour she's going to be doing. She has an upcoming documentary with a couple of very well-known doctors. Um, I got to meet one of them (laughs) (laughs) first back in 2017. Join us next time on Celeste's Circle.
for part two of this series with Carrie Sicily. Carrie will go on to talk about her upcoming book, which will be her second book that she's published. Also, her upcoming documentary series and anything else she wishes to discuss. She's still got a lot more information to share. So join Angie and Kate once again with Carrie Sicily on January 5th, 2023 at 7 p.m. You can catch us right here on Celeste Circle YouTube channel or you can go to our podcast and listen if you prefer. Also, Celeste Circle. You can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Anchor.fm, and more. So until next time, thanks for watching and listening. We'll catch you around the bonfire. And don't forget the marshmallows.